Once upon a time, there was a rich man. This man had three young daughters. Two of his daughters were very arrogant and sassy, and the other one was very kind and hardworking. This kind girl's name was Beauty. One day, the rich man got the news that his ships were lost in the storm. He told his daughters that because of this, they could no longer be rich. Beauty was very sad about her father's situation and consoled him. The other two sisters complained about the situation all day. One morning, their father received the news that one of their missing ships had arrived in port. My daughters, if my ship is still intact, I will bring you presents on the way home. Tell me, what do you want me to bring? A diamond ring, a ruby stone, a gold bracelet. And what about you, Beauty? Just bring me a rose, Daddy. When the father arrived at the port after a long journey, he saw the wrecked state of his ship and was very sad. On his way home, he passed through a dark and cold forest. Lightning flashed in the sky. The trees almost fell from the speed of the wind. The man was so cold and frightened that he wanted some rest. But just then, he noticed a magnificent castle. The man entered the castle. Hey, is there anyone here? There was nobody around. Despite this, it was quite bright and warm inside. Moreover, the top of the dining table was filled with delicious food. When the poor man saw the food, he could not resist it and ate them all. While walking around the castle, he saw an empty bedroom and went inside and had a comfortable sleep. When he woke up the next morning, he found new clothes next to him. This castle must belong to a kind fairy. I wish I could thank him. When the man was about to leave the castle, he noticed roses in the garden. I couldn't buy expensive gifts for my daughter, but at least I could take this rose for beauty. The man plucked one of the roses. At that moment, a very strong roar was heard. A terrible monster appeared from behind the trees. The man was so scared. I fed you. I made you sleep comfortably. And you are plucking my roses. Is this how you think? Forgive me, sir. I just wanted to take a rose for my daughter. There is a punishment for what you did. You have to bring me the first person you meet on your way home, or I'll catch you and imprison you for a lifetime. The man left sadly. Father, who couldn't see anyone along the way, saw that only Beauty was waiting for him when he got home, and their eyes met. So he regretfully told her what happened to him and the beast's will. Hearing this, the other sisters got very angry with Beauty. If you hadn't asked our father for roses, this never would have happened to us. What if my eyes would be my father's? What would happen then? I was going to surrender to a beast? Oh no! I'm so sorry, Daddy. I will do whatever it takes to keep you away from being imprisoned. The man took Beauty with him and went to the Beast's castle as he promised. They enter the dining room. Just then, a roar was heard again and the Beast came into the hall. Beauty was scared, but the ugly beast spoke very kindly to her. 
Your father will be leaving my castle in a little while. And you, will you continue to stay here voluntarily? Yes, I will stay here voluntarily. Beauty hugged her father and sent him home. Then she started walking inside the castle and saw a door decorated with roses. Curiously, she entered. A piano on one side, a swing on the other, a huge bookshelf and thousands of books. The room was just like in her dreams. She saw a small note on the table. My dear queen, I want to see you happy always. Your wishes are commands for me. Beauty thought she wanted to see her father one more time. Then she went down to the hall for dinner. After a while, the ugly beast came into the hall. My queen, may I accompany you to dinner? You are the owner of this castle. Why are you asking me? No, no. You are the owner of this place, Beauty. If you want, I'll go right away. I'm sure you find me very ugly anyway, don't you? Beauty was very surprised at the beast's reply and did not know what to say. I wish we got married and lived a happy life together. No, I don't want to marry you. The beast then left the hall. However, at every dinner, he prepared wonderful meals for Beauty and was very kind to her. As the days passed, Beauty realized that she was getting used to the ugly beast and was having a good time with him. Moreover, she was no longer afraid of the beast. One day, Beauty told the beast that she wanted to go to her father because she missed him so much. Of course you can go, but promise me you'll be back. I promise I will be back in three days. Then put this ring on your finger. As soon as you take off the ring, you will find yourself in this castle again. Beauty put on the ring and went to visit her father. Her father was very happy to see Beauty, but her sisters were very jealous of her. Your ring is so ugly, and it doesn't look good on you at all. Three days passed quickly. Beauty stayed there for the fourth day as she had so much fun with her father. However, she had a terrible nightmare in her sleep that night. In her nightmare, the beast was standing in the garden, sad and weary. As soon as she woke up, realizing that she missed him, Beauty immediately took the ring off her finger. Thus, she suddenly found herself in her room in the castle. She rushed down to the garden. The beast was indeed lying in the garden, exhausted with sadness, as she had seen in her nightmare. She came close to him and hugged him. Wake up, beast, wake up! If something happens to you, I will never forgive myself. The beast opened his eyes for a moment. Beauty, I thought you wouldn't be back anymore. I became sick with sadness and became weak. I... I realized I missed you while I was away, and I came to you voluntarily because... I... I love you. I want to live a happy life in this castle with you. At that moment, everywhere was covered with shimmering lights. She was looking around and was astonished at what was happening. When she turned her face to the beast again, she saw that there was a handsome prince in his place. Huh? Oh, who are you? Where is the beast? The beast is me, beauty. I was under the influence of an evil spell. If you hadn't told me you loved me, I would have remained an ugly beast for the rest of my life. Beauty has added happiness to her happiness, thanks to her good heart and true love. After that day, 
the handsome prince and beauty lived happily ever after in the bright castle. Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there was a witch named Camilla. This witch could only touch things that were golden. Even her flying broom assistant, Broomy, had to have a stick made of gold. Oh, Broomy, my dear broom, our golden balls are very few. We need Rapunzel's hair. Do you have plans for this, Your Majesty? Camilla took the glass globe and started to watch Rapunzel. She saw a dwarf standing next to Rapunzel. Actually, I have a plan, Broomy. And if I succeed, I can trap not only Rapunzel, but also anyone who is around her. Camilla came to the boiling cauldron and started to make one of the most powerful spells she knew how to conjure. She added two stones, some thread, a purple potion, and two golden balls into a large iron kettle. The cauldron frothed and boiled with apparent success, and a tiny tower appeared. <laughs> it's done. It is our tower, isn't it, Your Majesty? Yes, exactly, Broomy. The tower where we once imprisoned Rapunzel. But this time, itty bitty, incy wincy. <laughs> okay, but how will Rapunzel fit in there, Your Majesty? Don't worry, my bumbling Broomy. All we need is for Rapunzel to touch the tower. <laughs> With her tiny magical tower, Camilla got on her magical broom broomy and set off to the place where Rapunzel was. At that time, Rapunzel was heading to Snow White's castle with her friends Drado the Dragon, Silly Dwarf, and Clapsy, her talking hair clip. Thank you again, Rapunzel, for saving me from the swamp and the tree and that scary hella lady. You must be much more careful walking in the forest. I would think you'd know all the paths to Snow White's castle really well. We were almost about to miss the birthday party, and I would be very sorry if I couldn't eat cake. Don't worry. I remember the rest of the road. Well, shouldn't we stop to get a birthday gift for Snow White? Actually, I had made her a flower necklace because she loves necklaces so much. So, where's the necklace? I dropped it in the swamp. But I think you can be my gift. You have such a huge dragon with you. What could be better than that? <laughs> You're so smart, silly dwarf. Since Snow White loves necklaces, I can make her a flower necklace. Rapunzel assembled a very beautiful necklace for Snow White. Clapsy also made a box out of leaves. And Rapunzel put the flower necklace inside it. Meanwhile, the witch Camilla was secretly flying above them. You see, Broomy? She has a box in her hands. Now we will just swap that for this magic tower. <laughs> Camilla beamed a magical ray of light from the end of her broom right on the leaf box that Drado carried on his back, which caused the box made of leaves to open. Camilla sent the tiny tower in her hand through the magical beam right into the box and quickly closed the package tightly without Rapunzel or Silly Dwarf noticing. And that's it, Broomy. My plan is just that simple. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Camilla quickly moved away from there. After completing almost all the preparations for the birthday party, Snow White ran to the castle's garden. 
Even in the garden, there were a lot of people that came for the birthday party. Please move to the castle hall. Our party will begin soon. <laughs> Meanwhile, Snow White's best friends, the seven dwarves, were in a hurry. What's going on, Ace? My princess, we didn't tell you, but we've been looking for silly dwarf since this morning. I think he's lost somewhere again, or something bad happened to him. And just then, the silly dwarf entered the garden. My princess! Silly, where have you been? Silly dwarf told everything that happened in the forest. Then he invited Rapunzel and her friends to the castle's garden. Snow White was very, very happy to see Rapunzel. What a wonderful surprise this is! It's really nice to see you, Snow White. Happy birthday! Rapunzel gave the gift in her hand to Snow White. Thank you, Rapunzel. Come on, let's go to the castle and have fun. Everyone went to the castle hall and began to dance happily. Even Dragon Drado showed all his dance skills to everyone who came for the birthday. Snow White went to the gifts given to her. Among all the other large and small gifts, she chose Rapunzel's gift to open first. She really liked Snow White, so she was curious about what the gift was going to be. Oh, what a beautiful tower this is! I love it! But as soon as Snow White touched the tower, she quickly shrunk and was trapped inside the tower. Rapunzel and the seven dwarves had seen what happened and ran to her immediately. Rapunzel, this tower, the tower that Camilla imprisoned me in. This must be Camilla's doing, but she caught the wrong person. So what are we going to do now? How are we going to save the Snow White? Snow White could see everyone from the tiny window of the tower. They all looked very huge from her little prison. Rapunzel told her not to worry, and that she would save her by undoing the magic spell. Drado, get ready! We are going to the real tower! Rapunzel jumped on Drado with the tiny tower and flew to the real tower, where she had been imprisoned long ago. As they approached, Broomy, the magical broom, saw the lights coming out of the glass globe and told Camilla right away. It's done! I did it! My glass globe says Rapunzel was trapped into the tower. <laughs> Let's go and get her. Camilla got on her flying broom and set off. Broomy stopped suddenly as he saw Dragon Drado to approach them. Ah, I see a dragon, a huge dragon. Grr, no, no, no! It's Rapunzel. So, who's trapped in the tiny tower then? I don't know, Broomy, but we have to stop that dragon. Camilla started shooting powerful spells at Drado one after another. While Drado was dodging the spells, Rapunzel was trying to hold on tight so she wouldn't fall to the ground. Drado, this is Camilla's magic. Be careful. We need to reach the tower. Drado started to spray fireballs on Camilla. Broomy Broom didn't want to catch on fire, so began to fly away. Uh, stop! I said stop, Broom! Where are you going? Go back, I said. Back! I command you! Drado slowly approached the top of the Great Tower. 
and Rapunzel made a bridge with her hair and jumped through the window. Then she placed the tiny tower in her hand in the middle of the room. Oh, please let this work. I hope the magic spell will be undone. Everything will revert. Please, please, please. The small, tiny, teeny weeny tower trembled. And after that, it started to rise from the ground. And then there was a strong burst of light and Snow White appeared out of the tower. Snow White! Oh, the reverse spell worked! Hooray! Oh, Rapunzel, I'm saved! Thank you! We have to go, Snow White. I'm sure everyone in the castle is very worried about you. Snow White and Rapunzel soon returned to the birthday party in the castle. The seven dwarves and guests were very happy to see their Snow White safe again, and at the right size. I just wanted to give you a necklace as a gift, Snow White. I didn't realize that a spell had been put into the box. You saved my life. That was the best gift you could ever give me, Rapunzel. Although Snow White and Rapunzel were the princesses of different lands, they always protected each other and kept each other safe, because friendship and love were the most valuable things in this world. Witch Camilla, on the other hand, was very angry when she found out that she had caught Snow White instead of Rapunzel. Grr, I can't believe it! My plan has turned upside down! Who could predict that? I want the golden blonde hair, Broomy. Not the... Snow White! In a land far away, there lived a beautiful princess named Cinderella. Cinderella was married to the handsome Prince Leo. They lived happily in the great castle and enjoyed their lives. But back at Cinderella's home, her stepmother, Lady Puffy, and her two daughters were all upset and jealous. <sighs> if I was living at that castle, I would be going to the best balls and dances. <laughs> I would be eating the most delicious meals at the castle every evening. Even their cat, Papu, would dream about a wealthy life at the castle. Lady Puffy was so angry that she threw Cinderella's things out the attic window one by one. We don't need any of these things anymore. It's all useless. Suddenly, Lady Puffy <laughs> spotted a box, which was left in the corner of the room. With great curiosity, she opened it up and found an old pocket watch inside. Lady Puffy took the pocket watch and headed to the living room. The sisters also were very curious when they saw the old watch, and they pressed the button on the side of the watch to open it up and to see what was hiding inside. It seemed to be an ordinary watch with an ordinary mirror, except the hands of the clock began to turn backwards. All of a sudden, bright lights shone out of the watch and lit up the whole room. They were all surprised, and suddenly, an evil fairy appeared in front of them. <laughs> Finally, I'm back in the real world! <laughs> you? What? Who are you? I am the fairy of the past. My name is Kyrabelle. Kyrabelle was thrown out of the fairy world because she was a bad-hearted, cruel fairy. She told Lady Puffy and her daughters, Whoever of you ladies saved me may make a wish. Anything you want. <laughs> me, 
Me! No. I saved you! It was me! The evil fairy, Kyrabel chose Lady Puffy for the wish. And without hesitation, Lady Puffy made a wish. I want you to turn back time to the night of the ball. Prince Leo shall get married to one of my beautiful daughters. Gotcha! <sighs> the evil fairy waved her magic wand at the pocket watch and made every watch in the whole country turn backwards. When that happened, Cinderella suddenly found herself back in time at the night in which she became married to the prince. Then, time slipped backwards again when she was at the huge mansion that was built for the glass slipper. She tried to get into the mansion again. Then, she moved back in time again when Lady Puffy and her daughters locked her up in the house and went to the mansion to try on the glass slipper. Prince Leo found Cinderella's shoe at the castle stairs and again the clock hit 12. The wonderful dance took place once more. Then Cinderella headed to the castle in her pumpkin coach. Time kept slipping backwards until Cinderella found herself sitting under the hazelnut tree with Cheddar and Mozzarella and Fairy Leabelle came back again. Beautiful Cinderella, I came to help you. Leabelle, what's going on? The prince doesn't know me anymore. This must be the work of my evil sister, Kyrabelle. Leabelle told about some mysterious box in the world of the fairies. It was strictly forbidden to open up that box, but Fairy Kyrabelle opened it anyway. No! She told that Kyrabelle was punished and trapped into an old pocket watch. After a long time had passed, she was set out of her prison by Lady Puffy and her daughters. She showed Cinderella that Kyrabelle was together with them. Lady Puffy made a horrible wish to Kyrabelle. In order to fix this, we need to lock her back up inside of that watch. I agree, but how? Leabelle? Cinderella and their little friends made a plan. Another few days turned backwards. The ambassador of the castle announced the ball again. But this time, Cassandra and Jezebel didn't tell Cinderella about the ball and tried on their ballroom dresses in secret. The next day, to stop Cinderella from going to the ball, Lady Puffy locked her up in the attic and walked away with her daughters without saying anything. Before entering the ballroom, Kyrabelle appeared next to them. She waved her magic wand and put a love spell on Cassandra. As soon as Cassandra entered the ballroom, she caught Prince Leo's attention thanks to the love spell. The prince headed towards her and asked her if she would dance with him. Uh, yes Meanwhile, Cinderella and her little friends were still locked up in the attic waiting for the good fairy. The white pigeon arrived at Cinderella's small window carrying the old pocket watch in which Kyrabelle was trapped before. A moment later, the good fairy Leabelle appeared in front of them. We have to go to the hazelnut tree right now! Fairy waved her magic wand once, and all of a sudden, Cinderella and her friends found themselves under the hazelnut tree again. But from behind the tree, the evil fairy Kyrabelle surprised them. 
Your plan will fail. Cinderella will never make it. And now it's your time to be trapped in the watch, Leah Belle. The evil fairy cast her spells at Leah Belle with all her nasty powers. And Leah Belle fought back with her magic wand. The little mice and pigeon hid behind Cinderella because of the powerful battle. Leah Belle's wand became stronger and stronger. And finally, the evil fairy was defeated and blown down to the ground. Cinderella, the watch! Open the watch! Hurry up! No! Please! I can't be trapped inside that watch again! Cinderella opened the watch in her hand quickly. The evil fairy Kyrabelle disappeared slowly and went back into the mirror in the watch. All the watches in the country started to move correctly again. But of course, this was not the end of the story. The ball! I'm too late for the ball, Leabelle! The good fairy, with a magic touch, gave Cinderella a wonderful dress and her famous glass shoes. A few moments later, with a little help of magic, she turned the pigeon into a huge bird. So, Cinderella sat down on the back of the pigeon, and without wasting a moment, they quickly flew away to the castle. But when she arrived, she saw Prince Leo dancing with Cassandra. Mozzarella and Cheddar ran to the prince and tried to wake him from his spell. Hey! The most beautiful girl at the ball is over there! The most beautiful girl? Whatever. Let us dance. <laughs> Look, she's waiting for you. Go! As soon as Prince Leo saw Cinderella, he fell in love with her again, and the magic of true love destroyed the spell of the evil fairy. Cinderella and Prince Leo started to dance. I think I know you. Your beautiful face looks really familiar. Cinderella happily danced with the prince. Also, Mozzarella and Cheddar were dancing. Finally, everything was as it was supposed to be. Cinderella and Prince Leo were married again within a few days, and their lovely hearts were back on track. While Lady Puffy and her arrogant daughters were mad out of jealousy. We couldn't make it again! 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 again. again. Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there was an evil queen named Hela. She used to be much taller, but not long ago, she stole the invisibility crown from Snow White, and her evil spell backfired. And her overly loyal servant, Dunkov, came to Hela with a huge magic book. Aha! Listen, my queen. The ingredients are as follows. I hope this is the right spell, Dunkov, because I cannot wait until the next full moon to recover. A pinch of white hair, a pair of stinking shoes, some baked pine gum, and lots of sparkling llama spit. And then there is the toe jam of a loyal servant. I think I can provide that. Ew, what disgusting materials are these? This must be your own recipe, Dunkov. Oh, wait, my queen. This book says it will definitely work. Those ingredients will either make me smaller or dumber, Dunkov. Uh, I don't know about that. It's not made me any dumber or shorter. Hella's plan had been to destroy Snow White's beauty by stealing the invisibility crown from her. But to her embarrassment, she destroyed her own beauty 
but she still had the crown. Snow White and the seven dwarves decided to recover the stolen crown from the evil Queen Hela. They were quite determined. But, Princess, Hela might use the invisibility power of the crown to thwart our plan. I know, angry dwarf. That's why I won't go to Hela's cave alone. We will come with you, too. No way, my friends. This is very dangerous. Only me and the wood nymph will go there. Snow White said goodbye to the dwarves and hit the road with the wood nymph. Meanwhile, the evil Hela sought out other evil witches to help her undo the spell and grow back to her original size. Dunkov, when I'm gone, just keep the cave dark. I don't want anyone to see my crown. Yes, my queen. I can protect the crown even in the dark. <sighs> Hela set out in her tiny form to seek help from other witches. After a while, three witches met in the secret room of the evil sorceress, Xena, who was a pastry cook in the city. However, when Hela entered the room, the other witches could not contain themselves and started laughing. <laughs> what happened? What are you laughing at? We didn't expect you to look so funny, Hella. <laughs> I always wondered if anyone still messed up their spells, but I didn't think it would be you, Hella. <laughs> Although Hella was embarrassed by the witch's mocking, she tried to hide her hurt feelings. <laughs> You've got to take big risks for big rewards, witch sisters. Rewards like the magic invisibility crown. What? what? Do you have the invisibility crown? <laughs> yes, of course. What did you think? When the evil sorceresses, Xena and Camilla, heard that Hela had the invisibility crown, they stopped mocking her. Hmm... Well, we have just the right spell to undo the damage, my sweet Hella. And maybe one day, we'll need you to return the favor. The evil witches went to the cauldron and began to prepare a potion for Hella. Meanwhile, Snow White and the wood nymph arrived at Hella's cave and sneaked quietly inside. It was so dark that they couldn't see where they were going. So the wood nymph flapped her magical wings and spread out some lighted fairy dust. Thanks to the light of the nymph, Snow White saw Dunkov snoring right next to the invisibility crown. Snow White took tiny steps and gently took the royal crown. But just as she took the crown, the magic gong in the cave began to ring very loudly. Snow White was startled and dropped the crown. Oh no! Just as the crown was about to hit the ground, the wood nymph used her power of light to catch it. Even with all that noise, Dunkov never woke up. I can't believe it. How did he sleep through all that? As the wood nymph and Snow White sneaked out of the cave, Hela and the other witches were finally finished with Hela's recovery potion. Hela, you will now be able to go back to normal whenever you want. And also, you can be a dwarf whenever you want to use the crown. Now you won't have to wait for the full moon every time. But, in exchange for this potion, you must also share the invisibility crown with us. Otherwise, you cannot use this potion. Although Hella did not like this offer from the witches, she accepted. But just when she was about to drink the potion, they warned her. Stop! Look, 
you're about to make another big mistake. This potion isn't for drinking. You're supposed to pour it over your hair. While Hella poured the potion over her head, the witches spoke the magic word. Hella up, potion, potion down. down. Hella up, potion, potion down. down. And Hella was finally back to normal. Ah, ooh, you made it. Yes, hooray. Hella up, potion down, yeah. Hella was so pleased to be back in her original shape that she could finally use the invisibility crown. She set off immediately to return to her cave. Don't, Don't forget, forget to bring, to the, bring crown the crown to us. To us. Ah, yes, yes, okay, which is up, potion down. <laughs> Snow White and the Wood Nymph had already taken the royal crown and arrived at the castle by the time Hella returned to the cave. We did it, my dwarves. I got my royal crown again. Meanwhile, back at the cave, the evil Hella could hear the magical alarm and saw that the crown was missing. She became very mad. No, no, no! My invisibility crown has been stolen, Dunkov! Dunkov's hearing must have been going because he didn't even hear her while he was asleep and continued to snore. Hella sat on a stone helplessly and brooded. The royal crown has finally returned to its owner. The kind-hearted Snow White and all her friends were now very happy. <laughs> the evil Hella never realized that stolen blessings are never a blessing at all and only bring bad luck. I will destroy you at all costs, Snow White. Once upon a time, in the most beautiful castle by the sea, was Princess Arya and Prince Edward. In the evening, they walked along on the pier of the castle and watched the sunset. And in the morning, they swam in the sea to enjoy the sun. None of the other humans in the kingdom knew that Princess Arya was actually a mermaid. Except the prince, of course. My princess, eventually everyone will figure out that you're a mermaid. Why do you wish to keep it a secret? Not all people are as kind as you, my prince. If they realize that I'm a mermaid... Whenever Mermaid Arya thought about telling her secret, she would remember her father's words. Daughter, you must realize that human beings are harmful. One day, Arya and her friend, the maid of the castle, were walking along the coast. Uh, uh, Daggy, come on, run and bring it, my boy. <laughs> Daggy loves you so much, my princess. He is a very loyal, very kind dog, Lily. My princess, I want to ask you something if you allow me. Mm-hmm. Of course you may ask. The servants in the castle, my friends, the people, everyone thinks you're a mermaid. Is that true? The mermaid was shocked by the things she heard. She immediately remembered the free and beautiful memories that she had in the oceans. It's not true. I, I'm a human just like you. I just love swimming and watching the sea creatures. <laughs> Sorry, my princess. Everyone was asking, so I was wondering too. 
No problem, Lily. If you'll excuse me, I must go back to the castle and continue my work. Come on, boy, come on! After Lily left, the little mermaid Aria went to the pier with her dog, Daggy. I feel very bad because I can't tell the truth, even to my friend, Daggy. Daggy barked several times, pointing at the ocean. <laughs> Daggy, are you trying to say that maybe it would be good to see my underwater friends, right? <laughs> While Lily was working in the castle hall, she came out on the castle's balcony for some fresh air. And she saw Arya down at the pier. Just as Arya stood to jump into the sea, Lily saw Arya's human legs turn into a mermaid tail. She was astounded. Lily ran excitedly and left the castle. She couldn't believe what she'd seen. She started to tell her closest friends what she saw. Meanwhile, Mermaid Arya went to the Deep Sea Kingdom and visited her father Poseidon, her sisters, and her best friend the tiny dolphin, Dolphy, who always listened to Arya's questions. Dolphy... I'm afraid to tell people that I'm a mermaid. Why are you afraid, Arya? Because humans may not be as understanding as my kind Edward. Yes, but you've always been good to people, Arya. So they won't want to hurt you. You're a mermaid and so lucky. <laughs> Don't you think they'll understand? <laughs> You're right, Dolphy. Of course they will be. As Aria was talking to her tiny friend Dolphy, Lily's friends, back on land, did not believe Lily and <laughs> thought she was lying. I'm not lying. I'll prove to you that Princess Aria is a mermaid. Huh. <laughs> when it was evening on the coast, Lily secretly went to the pier with a glass box and waited for the mermaid Aria to return. Lily was hurt that her friends had laughed at her and that the Princess Arya had denied being a mermaid. After a while, she noticed a ripple on the water and dragged the glass box to the end of the pier and dropped it into the water. The little mermaid Arya was underwater, unaware of Lily's glass box, which was coming down from the pier, almost invisibly in the water. She was about to get out of the water and turn into a human, but she crashed into the glass box in the water. Before she realized what was happening, the lid of the box closed on her. Help! What's happening? Help me! When Lily felt the tug on her rope, she pulled the glass box from the sea and left it on the pier. Arya became hopeful for a moment when she saw Lily. Lily! Lily! Save me! Sorry, Arya. You are a mermaid, and you lied to me. Now I have to prove to my friends that I'm not a liar. Huh. Lily dragged the glass box to an abandoned spot on the coast. Arya tried and tried to get out of the box, but it was locked tightly and she could not escape. She couldn't call her friends on the land, nor in the sea. Morning finally came, and Lily woke up early to wait for her friends to come. She quickly covered the glass box with a cloth, and Little Mermaid Arya was not able to do anything. She couldn't see outside the tarp, and she was so very afraid. Lily's friends finally arrived at the beach. Here is the proof that I'm not a liar. Look at our Princess Aria. All this time she hid from us that she was a mermaid. Lily's friends were wide-eyed and so shocked that they couldn't even blink. They examined Arya closely to see if it was the princess. They were amazed. 
But as it happened, the wicked sea witch Vega was watching from the ocean and decided that she could use this situation to her advantage. Hmm. It looks like Arya needs help. <laughs> Yes, it looks like this is a perfect opportunity. Vega took her octopus arms out of the water and stretched them towards the beach. She grasped the glass box which Arya was in. Lily and her friends couldn't believe what they saw, and of course they were so scared. Arya pounded on the glass but could not escape. Vega dragged the Little Mermaid Arya into the ocean, and the maids stood and did nothing. No! Oh no! An, an octopus woman has kidnapped the princess of our country! Vega opened the lid of the glass box she had kidnapped and released the mermaid Arya. Vega, you saved me! Thank you so much for your kindness. <laughs> yes, Little Mermaid, I saved you. And in return, you will give me the key to the treasure of the Deep Sea Kingdom. What? No! Yes! Listen, I'm grateful that you rescued me, but I cannot surrender the key to the treasure of the Deep Sea Kingdom. Friends should be kind without requiring a reward. Angry at these words, Vega wanted to imprison the mermaid back in the glass box. Then she started throwing ink balls from her octopus arms. However, the little mermaid used her magical sea powers to block the ink balls and stick Vega's dangerous arms into the sand under the water. I will find you, Aria. You owe me a favor. Favors are done without expecting anything in return, Vega. If you want to be a good person, you need to learn to be a kind friend. When Arya returned to land, she remembered how awful Lily had treated her, and Arya was deeply sad. She immediately went to Prince Edward to tell him everything that had happened. Then they summoned Lily. Lily, I'm sorry for not telling the truth. Yes, I'm a mermaid. My home is both the land and the sea, and I love ocean creatures and land people, too. I was cruel to you, my princess. I'm so sorry. The next day, Arya finally revealed to everyone that she was a mermaid. All the people living in the country and even the animals were very, very happy with this news. Because now they had a beautiful princess who could protect them both on land and at sea. <laughs> <laughs>